I'm Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here today with Michael Offer. Michael, hi. Hi. So, Michael, you are working at a um, research center. Tell us about it. Yeah. Uh, so, we are um, doing research. We do um, uh, simulation software for different um, applications like technological uh, simulations and medical simulations and stuff like that. And um, we write um, uh, numerical software for that in uh, C++ and Java. Yeah. And so you build also a, tr a simulation um, software for 3D printing. Yes, right. it's a visual programming environment. Actually, okay. it's a general purpose environment. So you can just program any type of uh, Java and Groovy application you, you like. And you can combine it with uh, visual programming. And uh, yeah. Should we t so you want to do a demo as well, right? Yeah. yeah OK, right. so let's look at it then. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I'll show the, the basics. Um, so the software is called VRL Studio. And it's uh, freely available. It's open source. And I just explain the basics, and then we go into the 3D printing stuff. So what you can see here is um, a very simple uh, Groovy class. It has just one method, hello world. And um, we can directly compile that from this environment. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we can create an instance. And uh, we get uh, a visual instance of that source code. So we write source code and uh, get a UI for that. So that's the basic concept. So you can just, without restarting the application, write small snippets and then connect them graphically. And um, let's try another one. Like in this case, um, we add uh, two integers, integer A and B, and we return the result. And the very cool thing is that also for this one, we um, get a nice interface. So this here is the interface for this source code. Mm -hmm. And now I can just type 2 plus 3, for example, and it gives me the result 5. And I can connect those, I can create another one, and declare a data dependency between them, like this. And I can hit invoke again, and I get uh, okay another result. And also, the environment does a validation. So if I type some, something wrong, like 2a, which is not an integer, and I click invoke, then I get uh, appropriate error messages. That, um, yeah, we can't see that now, but it, yeah, it just gives us an error message that says this is an invalid uh, data. So now it works again. So when people download your software, do yeah. they also get like examples of um, yeah they get examples so shapes so, and so um, yeah. uh, there is this uh, basic instructions for uh, how to visually program mm -hmm. so like I showed here um, there are also some examples here like um, a 3D geometry sample so what we do here is we define nodes in space. And we define a triangulation, and then we just return a um, geometry. So let me scroll down a bit. So here you see a uh, V-geometry 3D object. <coughs> yeah. If I compile that one, it works just like the, the other example. Um, in this case, we get a 3D visualization. OK, don't know why we see that one. But then, um, then we try the other one that already works. Must be because of the second monitor or something. Right. So um, let me close those here. But we also have a navigator. We can just browse components. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we are now going to look at the JCSG uh, um, library which is just an ordinary Java library. It also uh, has interfaces for uh, JavaFX and Swing. And um, now we design a uh, 3D geometry. So in this case, we have a, a cylinder. And now we have a second cylinder. We can define the resolution of the cylinder and radius and so on. And then we create 
a custom one. And this is special again. You can just write the source code, which is really minimalistic, and then you get an interactive visualization. So I just, you see it here. So you can change the... Yeah. yeah. You can change the view and debug it, so you visually see the result of the, the computation here. And so the, the last one was actually something that was also pre-coded, or it was available as a sample? It, it's available as a sample, okay. right? So the whole thing is available as a sample. I created it at uh, the last DevOps conference in, in Belgium. And um, so now let's expand uh, the other one. So here we build the difference between the first cylinder, between this one. Mm -hmm. So I select it, it's blue now. And um, these uh, circles. And the difference is this. Um, so uh, we, we build a circular structure out of small cylinders, and then we can print that. And if we only print the boundary, then we have a bracelet or something like that. So, And um, yeah, that's the software. It's completely open source. Just Google for a VRL Studio, and you will find it. And yeah, okay. it's uh, based on Java and Swing, and also um, uh, partly on uh, JavaFX now, so mm -hmm. we are converting it. Yeah. And so you build a little um, holder or robot. Can you yeah, show us uh, the, the robot? I can hold it here in the middle. Yeah. We should. We can ah, switch. Yeah. Sorry. Here. Yeah. Switch the camera, and then so I can hold it. Yeah. So tell us about like what is. This is, is a, um, a Raspberry Pi, and two servo motors, and then just uh, a small breadboard on top. Okay. And this is a completely functional robot. And uh, all the, the connecting parts are printed on an Ultimaker uh, 3D printer. And you can also code and design all these parts, like the wheels, for example, uh, in Java. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, either the VRL Studio for general purpose programming, or JFX Get, which is a smaller application uh, that lets you do this um, uh, in, in Groovy code. And then you can just print replacement parts or bigger wheels or something. You can just customize it. And there was also a presentation uh, at Java 1. Um, and there we have some schematics and, and demo code. And also Java code that runs on the Raspberry Pi uh -huh. to control the, the robot. So you can control it from this um, uh, Pi on Wheels software. And yeah, then you can build small robot armies and control them from uh, Groovy or Java. So I'm pulling it apart because uh, uh, the fascinating thing is that uh, you actually printed those, uh, the holders, right? Yeah, you pull the, here are the holders. Um, the holders. We can yeah. also take that apart. Just a very small uh, piece. It's easy to code. Just a few lines of code and you can completely, um, yeah, customize it, like the, the spacing here, if you have a different board, like a new Raspberry Pi 2, maybe you change it a little, or you just want a different uh, shape. Mm -hmm. And also, um, the, the connecting parts for... Um, I'm holding this part. Yeah, I take Oops. the servo out. You see here, we also have this white uh, servo holder. And it fits very nicely, so it's difficult to take it apart. Yeah. It's like this. Yeah, yeah, so really simple parts that uh, just uh, enables you to assemble this. Yeah, right? so if I you have um, another one here. To do this at school, for example, or university, of course, you have to buy one 3D printer. Uh -huh. But then it's only just Raspberry Pi and a few other parts. So the robot is very, very cheap, like uh, a tenth of, of most of the other uh, robot projects like Lego or, or Mindstorm or something, and you can do amazing things with it. So you can do Java programming on it, and also uh, other languages, and yeah, it's really and fun. And so on your wheel, you actually have also a little motor, right, to, uh, to action the, the wheels, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, a, that's a, a standard servo motor um, from model makers. You can just buy it online. And I changed it to uh, support um, uh, um, full motion, because usually it stops after some degree, mm -hmm. and it's just for, for uh, rudders or something, um, but I made a um, continuously moving device out of it, so it's a very cheap motor, like uh, five bucks or something, so really cheap, and you can control it from the Raspberry Pi and uh, set up different speeds and directions. That's awesome. So cheap, 
easy and programmable, changeable. Yeah. And all open source? <laughs> yeah, yeah, open source. So it's excellent. Thank you so much uh, yeah, cool. for talking to us and for showing you showing us your project. Yeah, thanks. Thanks you.